I was gonna say that they sounded like new strings. Let's kick it! Yeah, that's... That A is not there. play with it later <laughs> that's what she said and then you can practice your ukulele oh! <laughs> this guy coming at you live drinking a corona nico this is a soul okay. i had these i i bought some mexican beer i thought we were recording on tuesday which was cinco de mayo cinco de mayo uh, which was also did... a taco tuesday also Taco Tuesday. So I did. I just bought some Mexican beer. I bought some Pacificos. This is a soul. Yeah. Um, this is actually the first beer that I had in Mexico, in the country of Mexico. So it's nostalgic for me. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. Surprise. That's a that's a, uh, that's a really good beer. I'm yeah. I'm drinking something that my wife brought home. She's the beer drinker, really, in our family. Uh, Heller High Water Melon from 21st Amendment Brewery. It's a mm. seasonal release, and it has the Statue of Liberty on the can. Yeah, and I've had sit, some, I've had some there. from there. Is it good? I've, I've, I've never had, had that. I've never had that particular one. I have had other beers of theirs, and they are good. I like that 20, 21st century. Is it 21st century? 21st Amendment. 21st Amendment. What's the 21st Amendment? Is that something to do with of prohibition? Thinking? Okay. Well, that makes sense, of course. I knew that. I was just asking for all the people who might not know that out there. Obviously. Our foreign listeners. <laughs> in, in Turkmenistan. <laughs> you. Um, I don't know why I'm saying that to Turkmenistan. Yeah. I actually thought you were... Attack or something? <laughs> I actually thought you were starting the U S A U S A 21st amendment 21st 4% 4% uh alcohol by volume. Yeah. This is not this is not that great. It tastes like watermelon, but I mean, I don't know. Oh, if you if you let your wife buy the beer, you're drinking watermelon beer, I feel like. Although last time I was at your house, I, you guys had some good beer in the fridge, so I can't. We usually have a mixture of things, right? You know, a lot of micro brews and uh, just your your average ales and lagers every now and then. Um, you know, yeah, absolutely. I'll drink I'll drink one or two every now and then, but during Corona, I feel like everybody's drinking a lot more. Yeah, I, think I like it's called the Bud Light virus because <laughs> I've drank more Bud Light than anything. I like a variety. I like to, you know, we always have a keep a variety, you know, different whether it's crafts or, you know, a couple of the domestic. Some of those seltzers, I've gotten into a few of the different seltzers. Yeah, over this, over this coronavirus, you know, just trying to watch my girlish figure. So. The sole beer, you had it in Mexico? Yeah, I had this uh, first time I ever went to Mexico. I was in the Navy. I uh, took the tr- the trolley down in San Diego to the border in Tijuana. I don't know that you can do this anymore. I think it's a little less safe than it used to be in, in Tijuana or, or Mexico. Yeah. Um, but we used to just, you could walk right across the border. There was this taco stand that was there. They cut the meat right off there, you know, make these little Ooh. tacos, right? Oh, they were... The best to this day, the best tacos I've ever had, and anyone that's been there knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah. they had a, they had soul, um, and so it was this when I was in the navy. You used to go down when you were underage, right? Because the drinking age 19. down there was 18. They're, they oh, never wow. carded anyone. Yeah, they never carded anyone. So see, we always went to um, Canada when we were 19. Yeah, it was 19 in Canada. Yeah. Um, so. Mexico yeah. is a little bit further of a drive from Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Right, you know, Tijuana. Tijuana is a little little ways out there. 
you had a plan. Yeah, <laughs> weeks in advance, really. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> I'm staying at your house. Yeah, we. But it was always a good time. Always a party. You know, you'd take, you'd catch the early trolley back. You know, in the wee hours of the morning, and and nice. uh, yeah, it was a good time. Back in the Navy days. Back in the Navy days. Oof. So, speaking speaking of the Navy, I don't know how we transition. <laughs> um, I think Jack Black is wearing a Navy shirt in this movie. Ah, that's right. Nico, let's jump in and nerd out. This week, we're talking about Shallow Hal. Yeah, what a movie. This is a great movie. What's what's your history with this one? <clears throat> I think I, this came out in 2001. Um, right. I, I, that was the year I graduated from high school. I was a big Jack Black fan at the time. Um, probably saw this. It, I don't think I went to the theaters, but I think I saw it soon after. Um, I remember... I remember seeing it. Um, I remember seeing it probably on HBO or something. I don't remember the first time I saw it. I remember um, this was my uh, right around my senior year of high school um, is when this would have come out. Um, yeah, it would have been the Thanksgiving of my senior year, I think, right. or my junior year, two thousand one. 2001 i guess it would have been my junior year ironically i would have been in the, i joined the navy no no june no, of 2001 because so i would have been in the navy this was two months after 9 11 right so this would have been okay so this would have this would have been i would have been a senior in high school that's right i always get that mixed up um but yeah, I remember when this came out, you know, this was uh, seeing the previews for this movie and kind of being excited for it because it looked funny and it was at a time where like everybody kind of wanted to laugh, you know, yeah. and kind of get back to normal. You know, we had in the weeks after September 11th, you know, there was a lot of like I remember Saturday Night Live, like the opening monologue just being like the whole cast being like, hey. You know, is it okay for us to just laugh again? You know, like we're here in New York. Like, can we, you know, we don't know if it's time to move on or not, but we're just going to make some comedy and hope we entertain you, you know? Right. And it was, it, it was a, it was a moment in time like nothing else. You know, it's a moment in time that I think, you know, every American who lived through that probably has a little bit of, uh, uh, PTSD kind of associated with that and the, you know, kind of what happened uh, on that day. And everybody kind of dealt with it differently. And, you know, um, being a senior in high school, it was kind of a scary time, uh, you know, for for us as a nation, but also a good time to laugh, you know. But um, when this movie came out, it was, uh, you know, it was... It, it, I remember seeing the trailers for it and being like, oh, my God, that looks hilarious. Plus, it's a Farley Brothers movie. Right. Right. And it was uh, it was rated PG-13, released by 20th Century Fox, and it was a two hour long movie. So this was like the perfect, you know, uh, go to the theater with your with your uh, friend and his girlfriend and your girlfriend. Yeah. And, perfect you know, date movie because double it has, date. It has the the lead female star it has the big male star it's a comedy kind of funny kind of keep it funny keep everyone laughing it's the farley brothers so you kind of know what you're getting you know um it it actually did get some uh, teen choice awards uh for best comedy or nominations for best comedy best actress gwyneth paltrow best actor jack black but the this blew me away here nico when i was doing the research on it the Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 50%, and the audience score was a 45%. Yeah, I saw that as well, and I was very, very surprised, just because this is one that I really like this movie. And, and I consider every time it a classic. I, every time I see it on, I'll flip it on. You know, I'll watch it every once in a while. Yeah. Um, 
it, I found myself even watching it, even knowing what's coming, laughing out loud at right. spots. You know, there's a lot of those, there's those so uh, many, built in laugh so spots. Many hilarious um, scenes and quotes and just sayings that come out of this movie. You know, it's very much like um, like Anchorman or Wayne's World in that in that regard. Um, not quite on that level. But, uh, you know, right up there with there's something about Mary, Dumb and Dumber, you know, just this for me, you know, I I look at this movie and I'm just like, I know what I'm getting going into it. It's going to be funny. Uh, The Farley brothers tend to have a little bit of a sentimental sweet side to things when they when they write uh, movies or whatever. But yeah, you know, there's going to be a happy ending. Yeah, but they also know how to make you laugh your ass off. Um, right. They always have a, a pretty good setup. Like, uh, you know, they, they had the movie Fever Pitch, which was about the Red Sox. Um, right. I don't know if you ever saw that with Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. I yeah, love that movie. It it's one of my favorite baseball movies um, because it came out like at a perfect time. Um, right. Stuck on You. Uh, with Greg Kinnear and Matt Damon, where they play the Siamese twins. Uh, you know, there's just a setup for all of these. It's like Fever Pitch is about a guy that's addicted to sports and uh, wants to see the Red Sox win the World Series and stuff. And Stuck on You, you know, it's two conjoined twins and how they live their life. Um, me, myself, and Irene, um, you know, <laughs> a great, probably one of my that might be my favorite movie of theirs because yeah. it's so crazy. And it's Jim Carrey at his finest, like Jim Carrey at his absolute best. In my opinion, that movie is hilarious. I love that movie. And it never gets old. <laughs> no, it certainly doesn't. They did. Like I said, there's something about Mary, um, right. which is just, which I I've seen bits and pieces. I don't know that I've ever seen the whole thing. Hmm. I've seen that is like a, the clips that, is a, that you see, like when he has the the um, stuff in his hair. Yeah, and the fight like with when the dogs. dogs biting. Yeah, yeah. Right. That is a hilarious movie. I don't think it's their. I don't think it's their best, but it's pretty damn great. Um, and it's there's so much stuff that wasn't in the trailer that's just ridiculously funny uh, in that movie. Um, kind of like Dumb and Dumber, you know. There's some. There's some shit in Dumb and Dumber that you're like, oh my gosh, like you can't watch that with kids, you know? Um, right. <laughs> but uh, this have one, you, have you seen The Ringer, which is one they they did as well with Johnny Knoxville? Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. About the Special Olympics, he's he he fakes his way into the Special Olympics. <laughs> right. That, that also, movie is hilarious. Yeah, and they also did uh, Kingpin, which is another movie that um, Mitchell and I reviewed a while back uh, with Randy Quaid and Woody Harrelson and right. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray. Big Earn. Big Earn. And his, uh, his uh, comb over. Comb over. Which and is like we... epic at, at the one point in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like we said, Dumb and Dumber. So, sorry, we both took a drink there at the same time. We did. Sorry. Ashton, cut it. So, uh, Neil Young, Cheryl Crow, Cake, uh, and a bunch of other bands uh, do the soundtrack. You know, it's kind of a mishmash of of different uh, different alternative rock bands, I guess you'd say. There, yeah, and there's a few in there that you know. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know off the top of my head if I could, like, tell you any of them. Right. But, while it's going, you're like, oh, yeah, this is, you know. I yeah, I remember hearing this, this on VH1 in right. 1996. <laughs> you know, um, so the tagline, uh, the taglines are pretty good for this one. Um, the biggest love story ever told, which is kind of funny. You know, you see this poster of this guy. And Gwyneth Paltrow standing next to each other, and you're like, "What the heck?" And then you realize the shadow behind them. Right, um, you know, she's hilarious. she's like a big, uh, heavy set girl, you know. 
Um, one of the other taglines, are you a shallow guy? That one's kind of stupid. Uh, but the third one I thought was pretty clever. True love is worth the wait. Spelled W-E-I-G-H-T. Little punny. <laughs> Little yeah, punny. that is punny. I like those taglines. Yeah, they're pretty good. So um, the cast, obviously, we have uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jack Black, Jason Alexander as Mauricio. What an absolute perfect performance by Jason Alexander. Yeah, absolutely. Does it get any better? His just his whole look. It's like the, Oh yeah, and the fake the fake like the, spray on hair. Oh, yes. Yes. And how it's at the end it's like dripping. Yeah. You, know, you see it and it's messed up at some points. It's sprayed on different at some points. Like, right. Very inconsistent. Yeah. And he totally like has this super high opinion of himself and you know, it's just a super weird character. We find out he has a tail, like all kinds yeah. of crazy shit. He's he's a very confident guy for um, his you know he's small in stature he's got he's bald with spray on hair he's got a tail you know but despite all that he carries himself well I think well and he's you know he's just got this cocky attitude of you know he's who he is like this unearned sense of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. And he says, even at the, the one point, he says that he's actually, I make 29500 a year. Yeah. You know, about his salary. <laughs> so, Which, if for a full time employee, that's $14.12 an hour, <laughs> if you do the math. <laughs> so, um, Bruce McGill plays uh, Reverend Larson, Hal's dad. Um, Joe uh, Vitarelli plays Steve Shanahan. That's um, uh, Rosemary's, Rosemary's dad. dad. Yeah. yeah. And also Hal's boss. Um, we also have Kyle Gass, you know, uh, from Tenacious D. Tenacious D. I love the fact that he shows up in, in I don't know if it's all, not all of Jack Black's movies, but a lot of them. They're in together. Mm -hmm. They do stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, so I always like to see him show up. I like to see them on screen side by side. Plus, KG is just, you know, he's hilarious in himself. You know, his character right. in this is is great. He does a yeah. great job. Yeah, he does. Um we also had, uh, there's like a brief um, cameo from Molly Shannon from Saturday Night Live. Um, she plays the mom of uh, Hal Larson. At the beginning. Yeah, right. it's a it's an uncredited cameo, I guess. Um, but yeah, she's, she's there. Uh, and that's pretty much all the people from the movie that I really recognized. Um, I mean Anthony Robbins, Tony yeah, Robbins. Tony Robbins. He's he's kind of the the impetus of the movie, and it's a great little like, it's a great little setup. Like I think I think the way this movie is set up is actually fun. Um, right. You know where he meets Tony Robbins in the elevator, you know, and he tells <laughs> he shakes his hand and he says, "Wow, it's like grabbing a bunch of bananas." <laughs> right. Right. He uh, and at this time Tony Robbins was was gaining in popularity. He you know he has his thing that he does, kind of like a motivational or find find the good inside of you type of deal. And, yeah, he was uh, a motivational speaker. Right, right, and so it's a perfect opportunity for him to run in casually run into this guy in the elevator, and then all of a sudden, bam! Yeah, you know, as fate would have it, they're stuck in this elevator together. For you know what could have been hours, they didn't really give you a time frame. Right? Well, they they cut away when they come back. How like he has his pants off? Like, yeah, he's, he's all on he's the all floor, comfortable, just like chit chatting. Yeah, he's like taking his shoes and pants off. Like his day is over. Um, so basically, we find out that that uh, Jack Black's character, Hal Larson, is this um, 
this really uh, shallow person, uh, basically because his dad, when he was passing away, was so high on morphine that his only advice to him was, you know, find a girl with some nice cans, like a real good looking girl. Like he was completely fried out of his mind before he passed away. Right. And so like, we don't think it's a good idea for you to go in there. He's, he's not, you know, a kid shouldn't be in there. Yeah. And so this guy grows up and spends his whole life, um, you know, going after girls and like, being all about the, you know, the finding the most beautiful girl in the world. Like he's uh, really judgmental of other of women and stuff when he finds out like um, and his buddy uh, is pretty much the same type of person. Mauricio, Jason Alexander's character. Right. And he talks about this girl he broke up with who had her middle toe longer than her big toe. Yes. Yes. And. Like, that's the reason he broke up with this girl. And they see this girl later on. And she comes up in this bike. And you can complete... She's riding a bicycle through the park while they're walking together. Uh, Hal and, and uh, Mauricio. And you can completely see through her shirt, like... Right. This girl's, this girl's way out of Jason Alexander's league. Like, it's yeah, he's completely a, obvious. He's a solid four. <laughs> yeah. and this girl's like an eight you know like yeah easy and, but she has this this toe that's longer than the other one and she invites him to go see the beatles and he's like the beatles what are you talking about and she's like oh well all the living beatles eric clapton's gonna fill in you for, know yeah for john lennon <laughs> for john so lennon it was gonna be george harrison ringo Starr, paul mccartney with eric clapton and it was just like a private session right and he's like, nah, not really much of a Clapton fan because he keeps looking at this toe and how freaky yeah. the toe is. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hal is like standing there like, you know, are you crazy? Look at this girl, you know. So um, on that note, um, I don't know if you caught it. I didn't, but I, but I saw it in my research here. Um, this film was released the 1st of November in 2001 with that line in there. George Harrison passed away at the end of November in 2001. So it was it only made sense for for about a month mm. until no longer could that actually have happened. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. So a month later. Yeah. So um you know we see we see Jason Alexander and uh and Jack Black, you know, they're at this nightclub, you know, they're talking about their their uh, love lives and everything. And, you know, Hal's talking about how he's dating this great girl and everything. And she ends up breaking up with him. And, um, he, you know, ends up getting, um, passed over for this promotion at his job and stuff. And he, uh, uh, you know, finds out like his his super attractive neighbor and stuff is not interested in him, and you know he's way too because he's way too shallow and stuff. And then he runs into Tony Robbins in the in the elevator. Tony Robbins, you know, kind of has nothing else to do because they're locked in there together. So they sit there and bullshit. This is pretty much before any everybody was carrying cell phones, which is hilarious to me. Right. So they actually had to talk to each other to entertain themselves, you know. And yeah, uh, nowadays you'd be sitting there like playing Candy Crush or like watching YouTube or yeah, you know, calling on someone a movie to come or help something. you, right? Yeah, but um, you know, they sit in this elevator, and uh, you know, it's um, it's funny because the movie was was actually filmed in Charlotte. Uh, you I know, did see that right around where where I live and like the Bank of America building is his work building um, the fuel pizza where they go and uh, she breaks the chair and stuff and the Capitol Grill um, we go we we eaten at all those places and stuff so it's kind of cool to see uh, all these all these places and and how they've kind of changed since 2001 um, Especially like, you know, there's a 
there's a, a park that's featured quite a bit in the movie called Freedom Park, and uh, it looks way different than what yeah. they have there now. What's different about it? Um, just a bit like build up like monuments and stuff. Yeah, it's just built up more. Um, you know, there's more stuff to do, like more splash pad. <laughs> yeah, well, there's like those are tennis popping courts up everywhere. and stuff like that everywhere. Yeah. You know, so, um, and I never see anyone ever playing tennis, except for like high school kids. Um, but, uh, so they're waiting on the elevator to get fixed and stuff. And, um, it's kind of the same deal as like office space where he, uh, kind of hypnotizes Hal to give him, uh, give him a better life, you know, and they use the shallow Hal needs a gal, you know, well, that ends up being how to get him out of it. Yeah, that's right. no, that's how he gets into it, isn't it? No, that's how he gets out of it because he calls him on the phone and he says, "Oh yeah, yeah, Shella Howe wants a gal." Yeah, and uh, so he, Tony Robbins just uses some sort of voodoo hypnotism on him, and uh, you know it's funny to see him kind of poking fun at himself and everything. Right. You know that that kind of humanizes a person to me a lot. Um, but he he makes sure that Hal can only see people's inner beauty, um, and you know finds out or he doesn't know that he's he's been hypnotized. Um, but you know he goes around and he's seeing all these people, and you know he's hitting on this girl, uh, asks her for her phone number and stuff, and she's like, oh my gosh, yes, you know, you kind of get the feeling that something's up, and uh, yeah, you know, all of a sudden he's hitting it off with these beautiful women. Yeah, and then he goes to the club and he's dancing with all these hotties and Jason Alexander's character, Mauricio, comes around, comes back from the bathroom and sees that there's like, they're just, you know, one of them. Three of them are like banging There's three into girls. Him. Yeah. And like you see floor. him and he thinks he's just like dancing with these massive hotties and stuff. But, um, you know, the one girl is like 400 pounds. The other girl's like... <laughs> You know, with the, or the other girls like faces messed up and stuff, and they're just you know stereotypically ugly and everything. And and uh, he, you know, Jason Alexander's just like this is ridiculous, you know. Um, and it's funny because Jack Black keeps t- like telling him like, "Man, I was really hitting it off with these girls last night." Yeah, and, and then we went to the like, IHOP. Oh, yeah. The babes there were even hotter than the babes at the club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Mauricio um, is kind of worried about Hal uh, because he starts he starts dating uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's Rosemary. Um, she's the daughter of his his uh, boss, well, the guy that owns the company where he works, um, which is the Bank of America building, but. So she's she's like this really really like four hundred pound girl, huge in real life. But he sees her as Gwyneth Paltrow, right? And so, yeah, uh, they do a good job at making the distinction between the two. It's a very very big gap. Yeah, like he thinks he's hit the hit the freaking lottery, and he you know completely falls for this girl, and she takes him to the hospital and. Mm. Where she kind of volunteers and visits with kids and stuff, and he's just like, "Oh wow, this woman is amazing!" You know, she's she's like, "This is the perfect woman." You know, he's completely obsessed with her, um, and just head over heels for her, and can't believe that she's into him. You know, because he's right. kind of a kind of a hapless loser. Um, but she's kind of Gwyneth Paltrow does a really good job of playing like the the character like a a little bit humble and like you can tell she's she's kind of doesn't is is insecure you know she has this insecurity about her body and everything um she had some she had some interesting things to say about that um after this movie came out i guess that 
she the first day she tried the fat suit on right um, she was in the tribeca grand hotel in new york city and she walked around the lobby and she said it was so sad um and very disturbing because no one would make eye contact with her at all just because she was you know this this fat lady walking through the hotel yeah you know, and she's used to being the beautiful woman that everyone's looking at i'm sure right so for her that's got to be a 180 um where she's walking through places and no one's turning their head no one's noticing right she just has turned into this regular person and so yeah. i think she she probably used some of that and brought that into the role as far as that because i agree she does a really good job as that like kind of um i don't know what the right word for it would be like kind of Definitely a lower just, self-esteem. Yeah, low but, self-esteem and insecurity. You know, she plays it. She plays it a lot more humble than I had initially thought she would. You know, going right. into it, um, the first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh wow!" You know, she's kind of. She does a good job at making you feel like she's actually downplaying her looks, and she sells it. You know, um, right. and and we see. You know, it's it's interesting. You know, she'll wear these different outfits and stuff, and we get to see you know, both how the world sees her and how Hal sees her. And, you know, you start to kind of see how he's seeing her character and not her physical appearance, but her right. physical appearance kind of represents her character. Um, her and inner it's, beauty. it's an interesting kind of social experiment, you know? Right. Um, and, and uh, you know, Rosemary, initially, she thinks like, she thinks he's mocking her and stuff and and then starts to feel starts to feel a little bit more secure with him um and you know she starts to believe that he's actually sincere and not just making fun of her because she's you know she says at one point you know no matter what i eat i you know just always look like this and so um you know she's kind of given up on that and he kind of brings that back for her and makes her feel special you know um but uh mauricio you know he gets all worried about him and everything and goes and finds tony robbins um you know he gives him the the trigger phrase like you said which is the shallow howl once a gal right. um and uh they uh uh you know rosemary rosemary and hal go on a date and um, she tells him that she's uh, going to go on a, a mission uh, with the Peace Corps to Kiribati, um, which is a country in the Central Pacific Ocean. I had to look that up to see if it was real. Yeah. Population it's is a little just island, over 110,000. Right? It's a little island. Yeah. Yep. The it, it's only eight hundred square kilometers. <laughs> wow, that's pretty small. Anyways, um, Mauricio uh, calls Hal, and he gives him the trigger phrase: "The shallow Hal wants a gal," um, and it snaps him out of his hypnosis. And uh, you know, he he tells Hal about uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, hypnotizing him and stuff because that's what Tony Robbins just does goes around hypnotizes people um, <laughs> but Hal you know he kind of doesn't believe it he thinks Mar uh, Mauricio is full of shit and everything um, and he runs into this girl that he you know initially thought she was a hottie and sees her sees that she's you know completely unattractive Um and uh, he starts, like, avoiding Rosemary and stuff. He snaps back to his normal shallow state and right. becomes shallow howl once again. His neighbor um, starts starts coming around and because I think she was impressed by him by cause, because he was hanging out with Rosemary. She's yeah. like, oh, he must not be that shallow. Mm -hmm. And then she started trying to hit him up again, asking him to come over, asking him to go out to dinner. Yeah. So he's staying, he's avoiding Rosemary and staying away from her. 
you know, he's, he's, uh, he's upset, you know, he didn't see, he didn't see her for what she really was and stuff. And he goes out, like you said, with his, his neighbor. Um, and you know, they, she wants to date him now. And, you know, he kind of, uh, realize, he realizes that he's got feelings for Rosemary, you know, um, and sitcom style, they end up at the same restaurant together, you of know, kind of like of all the, um, of all the places in show. Mrs. Doubtfire climax scenario, right? Uh, you know, the Pierce Brosnan dinner scene where he's he's out there with his boss, but he's also having to be got to go back Doubtfire. and forth. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a good bit. Um, so, uh, but here the sh- here the shtick is he doesn't know what she looks like because he. After the spell was broken, he left the restaurant. He never saw her in person. Yeah. And so she sees him, right, with another girl. Yeah. They pass in the restaurant, and Jack Black doesn't even know that he just walked past Rosemary. Yeah. And he's headed to the payphone to call her. And can you imagine, like, the like Rosemary's situation? She sees him walk right past. Yeah, with another girl. They're holding hands at the table. He gets up from the table, walks right past her. I think he said something to her, like, hey, you know, or excuse me, or something like that, just walked by. Yeah. Because obviously he didn't know who it was. Yeah. So uh, Rosemary's just all flipped out, you know, calls him a psycho over the phone and just breaks up with him. He's upset, obviously. Um, So few days later uh hal finds out that rosemary's uh peace corps partner ralph (laughs) who who's always wanted to be in a relationship with her again uh like her only previous boyfriend and he uh, met he met ralph when he was still hypnotized so he saw ralph's inner beauty which he thinks he's he's a nice guy and stuff but he thinks he's a really good looking guy you know, he, I think he calls him a pretty boy or something like that. Yeah, your pretty boy, Ralph. Right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we we find out that, uh, you know, Hal goes after her, tries to find her and stuff. Um, and he runs in. He goes to the hospital where they had visited the kids before. Um, and all these kids that he saw as, like, these perfectly normal little kids that he, you know, didn't really even ask what was wrong with them. He just played with them and had a good time and stuff. Um, realizes that he's in the severe burn unit and it's just all these children with burns all over them, which is kind of horrifying. It's almost like a twilight zone episode in that way. Right. Um, when it hits this point, uh, I love, I love the idea of it. And I think that's the, the cool thing behind it is it does feel like a twilight zone episode. Um, you know, it has a message to it and that kind of thing. Right. Um, because they do such a good job showing things from his point of view while he's under hypnosis. Mm-hmm. So it ropes you in as well. It shows you characters from his point of view. And they don't necessarily show you char- some of the characters from uh, from the natural point of view until later on. Like the girl that he rides in the taxi with. He sees her as beautiful, and you don't see that she's not beautiful until the end when they meet, and she's like, hey, remember me? We we shared a cab. And he's like, ah, I don't know. And she's like, oh, maybe you don't know me because my hair's pulled back. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's so many... so many good good scenes uh, in this movie and so many comedic moments um, that it just it has to be seen. I mean, it's a great it's a great fun watch. Um, at the end here, we find out that um, that uh, Mauricio uh, starts telling Hal why he he stopped his hypnosis and stuff. And he's like, it's basically all over jealousy. And and the fact that he has a vestigial tail, <laughs> which can't be which removed, is one, which is one of the hidden gems of the <laughs> of the movie. And that the, I don't know if I you know I give it away, but at the very no, end, when he wags his tail. Yeah, I love that part. His little tail wags. <laughs> it's such right. a weird. 
he meets it's, a woman who who has a dog and loves dogs. Yeah, but and uh, you know this is basically he uses that to to keep himself away from his his shallowness to kind of keep himself away from getting close to a woman because if they see his vestigial tail, you know, he's just embarrassed of it. Yeah, yeah, and he was kind of. He was kind of filled with envy because Hal was so happy and stuff. And, um, you know, Hal does the does the nice thing and tells Mauricio to basically just like accept it, you know, own it, own that damn tale. Um, and they make up and, uh, you know, Hal decides to go and and patch things up with Rosemary and catch her before she gets away, you know. And, uh, you know, instead of running to the airport, he goes to the Peace Corps recruiting office um, and he goes he goes looking for Ralph, uh, believing that. And we uh, get to see what Ralph's true self looks like, not just his inner beauty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ralph is is not the person he had seemed. Right. They go over the top with all of these. Yeah, you they know, really it, do. They really Which is, yeah, and it makes it just even more hilarious because when you see him and he's just got like the, you know, I think it, one time Rosemary mentions about his psoriasis or something like that. And you just see him and he's just got like skin flakes <laughs> all over him and <laughs> they just go over above and beyond what they need to do. Yeah, that to makes really it drive extra, the point home. Right, extra comedic. You know, he's, he's got a polo shirt on and it's buttoned all the way up to the top. You know, like really, Ralph? Come on. Uh, so uh, Ralph and uh, his friend Lil Boy uh, get to the home of Rosemary's parents um, and find out, you know, there's a there's a party being a farewell party being thrown for Rosemary. Um, and Hal and Mauricio get there. Everybody arrives and, and Rosemary um is you know is like no I don't want to get back together with you Hal you know and you know Hal kind of puts his heart out there lays it all on the line um but Rosemary tells him you know she's going to the Peace Corps mission and Hal says that he just uh he just got sworn into the Peace Corps by Li- by Lee what do they call him? Lee Bo- Lee Lee Bo- Lee E Boy? Lee E Boy? Yeah, Lee E Boy. <laughs> uh something like that. Lee Boy, maybe. Yeah. Lil Boy. Anyways, the big the big heavy the big Hawaiian guy. dude. <laughs> so Hal and, and Rosemary get back together. Um, you know, and he tries to, you know, pick her up and carry her to the car and stuff, but <laughs> obviously can't. Um, but she <laughs> ends up picking him up and carrying him off, which right. is pretty damn funny. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. And, and we get the happy ending there. Mauricio and, meets meets the girl. And right. The, the, the lady, yeah, the lady with the dogs. But the, my favorite part is right at the end, you get that happy ending where they're coming out to the car, they're driving off into the sunset together, and, and they still put in the comedy the humor where she stands she gets up on the car and it tips yeah you know, and it's way it's just weighed down and as they're driving off you know you definitely see that car weighed down on one side and yeah you know they just they continue that the whole time through of just driving that comedy in there and it's it's hilarious yeah it really Do yourself is a favor and watch this movie if you haven't yeah uh you know, I don't think I don't think we got into the critical corner, Nico. But real quick, let's hit that. Yeah, um, give me some critical corner. Jeffrey M. Anderson from Combustible Celluloid, a reputable source, said it's Wait, an what insulting is combustible celluloid. That sounds it's, like a product. It might be. Is this a um, salesman? We're I just think it's. I think it's. Guy? I think it's like uh, film. You know, film oh, is combustible. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. that inglorious bastards taught me that. So um, it says an insulting new comedy from Bobby and Peter Farley. Who's insulted by this movie? It has a great message. Right. The message is, you know, to be able to look past the 
uh, physical abnormalities of people and to see their inner beauty. Absolutely. I was going to say that too. And and did we say what it was rated? Did you say? PG-13. Okay. Well, maybe the 13 can come down a little bit because of the good message. I yeah. feel like kids really would, would, you know, there's not any major, major stuff in there. Um, no, nah, maybe really some, not. Maybe some even sex that, stuff. That, some, se- some sex stuff. You do see uh, Gwyneth Paltrow from behind. It's not her. It's a body double. Mm-hmm. But she takes off her everything and throws the underwear at him. And then he, he, yeah, he picks up him up. Goes, and like, what are you, Houdini? Get over here. <laughs> Oh, it's a great you know, scene. But the message, you know, you get that, ju- you know, it's it's about what's on the inside that really matters, not what's on the outside. Right. And it's it's a timeless message. It's the message of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to judge people by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. I mean, beauty is beyond skin deep. And, you know, I think if you're ever really going to fully get to know and love somebody, you've got to be able to see that. Um, Peter Travers from Rolling Stone said, the film is a little bit, or is a little more than a series of fat jokes. I mean, yeah, but... There is a lot of fat jokes in there, and they made me laugh. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a fat guy. I feel like 2001, (laughs) you could... You could make fat jokes. I don't know if this movie gets released in 2020. I say fat jokes are still funny. I think, I think fat they're jokes funny are too. But then you get there's a whole faction of the public out there that are like, "Hey, now, no fat shaming. Are you fat shaming? Are you fat uh, shaming? We can't make fun of fat people anymore." Well, fat, you know, that's our word. You can't take that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm in that category as well. You can say large or you can say big, but you can't use the F word. Yeah. <laughs> That's cultural you... appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> you took that away from Samoan people. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, oh, you meant F A T? I thought you meant P H A T. Oh, no. That's. Oh, okay. uh, it's owned by Russell Simmons, I think. <laughs> so, Todd McFarley or McCarthy, sorry, Todd Todd McCarthy from Variety, with the relatively untested black, meaning Jack Black. Uh, you know, this was early on in his career, obviously. Yeah, this uh, was his first leading role. Yeah, with the relatively untested black coming on awfully strong, the lack of directorial finesse lets the expert lets the enterprise down sorry he's using you know uh three syllable words here creating some clunky scenes and dead air where laughs might have been expected well i mean obviously these people that saw this just didn't get the movie like i this is a movie that i've seen several times and like i don't understand how you can just get mad at it for anything like is there something in here that's particularly disturbing to you i don't know yeah i don't i don't get it i don't get it this is a this is a good watch this is a good you know looking for something to laugh at i feel like we haven't done a comedy in a while maybe since this is the end so i was glad we got back to a comedy i was ready for a laugh at this point of the uh corona coronacation corona um quarantine i feel like we need to laugh a little bit more it's true but nico yeah have i got a joke for you and his name is john c i'm gonna go on a rant that's not a joke knock knock who's there John Cena, bitch. <laughs> Can't see I, me. I love that. I love that. I, I'm not a wrestling fan at all, but I really appreciate it for what it is. Um, you know, former rehabilitated wrestling fan from the 80s, early 90s, you know. Um, 
anyways, uh, this is this is one of those movies that just kind of hit me at, at the right time in my life. Uh, you know, the first time I saw it, it was it was funny. You know, it had a good message, and it kind of really drove home that message of judging others based on their character. You know, more than their physical attributes. I mean, that's the whole the whole premise of the movie, and it kind of pokes fun at the physical attributes and stuff. And it's a fun movie with a you know great message, fine piece of entertainment. What's there to hate? It's shallow. How he wants a gal. End rant. He does want a gal. He does, and he ends up getting a gal. He ends up getting a gal, and you know what? It's the it's the gal he deserves. The gal he should be with. Nico. Yes. It's time for the plugs. Plug them, man. Plug them, plug them, plug them. Just a reminder, check us out on Facebook.com slash Next Level Nerd for curated nerd news, memes, videos, and other fun content. Be sure to share all of our podcasts with your friends and family. Uh, and if you're enjoying what we're doing, making these shows for you here on a weekly basis, we just want to, um, you know... Do our due diligence here. And, and once again, asking for your financial support. That's right, Bernie. That's right, Bernie. Um, if you're enjoying what we're doing, we just want uh, want to let you know you can go to patreon.com slash next level nerd and leave us a dollar or two a month. And, you know, that really goes to help us out here and keep, keep the uh, podcast going um, and helps purchase the uh, equipment we need to do this and all that stuff. And it uh, makes things a lot easier. Um, but if you can't support us with cash, support us by leaving us a review wherever you cast your pod. And be sure to subscribe and share the podcast with friends and family so you can catch next week's episode when we'll be talking about Smoking Aces. Nico, have you seen this one? I haven't, but I, I wanted to. Oh, this is a fun, fun, fun movie. This is a great action movie. Um, it's on Stars right now. If you want to stream it, um, you can get Stars through Amazon. Uh, the Stars app I have, um, and you know, I I can't recommend it highly enough. It's it's uh, pretty freaking great. They they tend to leave movies on there a lot longer than like HBO and that kind of thing. Um, better for movies than it is for shows. I'll I'll say that, and uh, you know. Right. Smoking Aces is on there right now. So what do you got to lose? Yeah, I'm pumped about it. I can't wait to sit down and watch this movie. Um, getting back into some action, right? It's, it's yeah. action. It's uh 2006 dark comedy action thriller. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy Dude. Piven, Ryan Reynolds, Ben Affleck, Jason Bateman. Jason Common. Bateman. Common. I think... Uh, and yeah, Garcia, ben. Alicia Keys, Taraje Henson. Ray so Liotta. many good people in this. Yeah, holy moly. It's uh it really is just like a great uh a great movie. Uh the whole premise of it is this guy is uh Jeremy Piven, I think, plays the the guy that is, there's a hit out on this guy. He's like a Las Vegas magician or something but he fled Las Vegas because he owes people money or something like that. And there's a hit put out on him and all these people are hit men. And I think Ryan Reynolds is the FBI agent. Ryan Reynolds is amazing in this. And I'm going to say uh, his beard in this movie deserves an Oscar. Um, yeah. yeah. And probably after watching this movie, I'm going to shave my beard like his in this movie because it's pretty damn perfect. Well, I'm looking forward to both watching the movie and now seeing what Ryan Reynolds' beard looks like. Yeah. And also seeing you next week with your beard looking like that. You're damn can't straight. Wait. Well, Nico, until next time. Spread the word. Spread the word. Boy, Brandon. Brandon. Representing Cleveland. Yeah, one nine.